Hello everybody and welcome to today's lesson on finding roots. Our objective today will be we will find all the roots of a polynomial function and we will write a polynomial function given its roots. In order to do that we need to first discuss the rational roots theorem. The rational roots theorem says if a polynomial has integer coefficients, then any rational root, and remember roots are the same as zeros, will be of the form p divided by q, where p is a factor of the constant and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. So in other words, we're saying the constant and the leading coefficient are going to give us some clues as to finding the rational roots of a polynomial function. Let's jump right into our example. f of x is equal to 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x minus 12. The leading coefficient of this polynomial function is 3 and the constant is negative 12. And now we're going to look for the factors of the leading coefficient and the factors of the constant. The leading coefficient of 3 has two factors and those are the numbers 1 and 3. And the constant has a few more starting with 1 and we're going to make that positive and negative 1 because the constant is a negative number. Positive and negative 2, positive and negative 3, positive and negative 4 positive and negative 6, and positive and negative 12. So what the rational roots theorem says now is that the possible rational roots of this polynomial are going to be quotients of the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient. Well then let's start we have the f all the factors of the constant divided by 1. In other words, they stay the same. We got plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. All divided by 1, so basically they stay the same. And then we have all those same numbers again divided by 3, plus or minus one-third, plus or minus two-thirds, plus or minus three-thirds, plus or minus four-thirds, plus or minus six-thirds, plus or minus twelve-thirds. Well, some of these we can actually eliminate because we already had them. Plus or minus three-thirds is the same as plus or minus one. So this one we can get rid of plus or minus six-thirds is the same as plus or minus two, and plus or minus twelve-thirds is the same as plus or minus four. So we can get rid of these three. This leaves us with a list of still quite a few numbers. It seems very large, but let's realize that we have narrowed down the possible rational roots of this polynomial function from infinitely many possibilities to just a list of now 9 or with the positive and negatives 18 numbers and we are not saying that these are all the different rational roots of that function we're saying if that function has any integer rational roots then they're going to be some of those numbers that we have here Let's try this out one more time with another example. Find all the possible rational roots of the function f of x is equal to 4x to the fourth power minus 3x cubed plus 9x minus 10. The leading coefficient is 4 and the constant is negative 10. That means 4 has the factors 1, 2, and 4. Negative 10 has the factors plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 
plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. So now let's go ahead and write out all our possible quotients that could be rational roots of this function. We're going to take the list of the factors of the constant divided each time by one of the factors of the leading coefficient. Starting with dividing by 1, we get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10. All divided by 1, so we don't have to make any changes here. And then let's take the same list and divide it by 2. Plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 2 halves, plus or minus 5 halves, plus or minus 10 halves. And one more time, the same thing, all divided by 4. Plus or minus 1 fourth, plus or minus 2 fourths plus or minus 5 fourths, and plus or minus 10 fourths. That's our list, but there are a few that we can get rid of. Plus or minus 2 halves is the same as plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 10 halves is the same as plus or minus 5. Plus or minus 2 fourths is the same as plus or minus 1 half. And plus or minus 10 fourths is the same as plus or minus 5 halves. So this is our final list of possible roots of this function. Let's now talk about a very important theorem of algebra. As the name already says, the fundamental theorem of algebra. And it says that if f of x is a polynomial of the degree n, and n is a number greater than 0, then f of x is equal to 0 will have at least one solution. But this theorem also has a corollary. Corollary really means like an extension. And the corollary of the fundamental theorem of algebra says if f of x is a polynomial of the degree of n and n is a number greater than 0, then f of x is equal to 0 will have n solutions including multiplicities. And multiplicities is something that we're going to talk about in our next class. But the short of this corollary is that the degree of a function tells us, because it's equal to the number of solutions. The degree of a function tells us how many solutions that function will have. And here's our example. How many solutions does the function f of x is equal to x to the seventh power plus 2x to the 6th power minus 4x cubed minus 7 have. The degree of this function is 7, and 7 is the number of solutions that this function will have. That's all this says in a nutshell, and we have talked about this previously already in class. So remember the corollary of the fundamental theorem of algebra the degree of a polynomial function is equal to the number of solutions of that function. So how do I find all those solutions, zeros, of that function? Here we are supposed to find all the real zeros of the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 8x squared plus 11x plus 20. And we are going to use the rational roots theorem for that. But the fundamental theorem of algebra and its corollary already told us we're going to have to find three solutions. Now let's get started. Using our rational roots theorem, we're going to find all the possible numbers that those rational roots could have. Our constant is 20 and our leading coefficient is 1, 
So the factors of 20 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, and plus or minus 20. The rational roots are going to be sum of all of these different numbers. And now let's remember our synthetic division. We're going to start dividing our polynomial to see which one of these numbers is a solution and also to use that to peel down a polynomial layer by layer, exponent by exponent, to get to all our solutions. Let's just start with the number 1 and set up our synthetic division. Positive 1 goes on the outside, and then in our rocks we put 1, negative 8, 11, and 20. And now let's get started. We bring down the 1, multiply 1 by 1 is 1, add negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7, multiply 1 by negative 7, we get negative 7, 11 plus negative 7 is 4, multiply 1 by 4, we get 4, 20 plus 4 is 24. Since this is not 0, positive 1 is not one of our zeros, or one of our solutions. Well, too bad, we're going to have to keep trying. Well, then let's take the next number in our list, negative 1. And again, we're going to put our coefficients into our box. Bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Now we're adding negative 8 plus negative 1, which is negative 9. Negative 1 plus times negative 9 is positive 9. 11 plus 9 is 20. Negative 1 times 20 is negative 20. And 20 plus negative 20 is 0. And here we go. Since this is a 0, negative 1 is one of our zeros. And we now have turned what used to be a cubic function into a quadratic function. And the quadratic function we have now, using our coefficients, is 1x squared minus 9x plus 20. And we already found one of our factors, so let's see what we have up to this point. f of x is equal to x, and here we have to change the sign, right, because negative 1 is a 0, so our factor is x plus 1 times x squared minus 9x plus 20. And this trinomial in the back we now have to use to find the other zeros. Let's see if we can factor this. Target sum is negative 9. The target product is 20. Are there any factors of 20 that work for us? Yes, indeed. Negative 4 and negative 5 will work. So we can now write our fully factored function. f of x is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 4 times x minus 5. And our zeros or roots or solutions of this function, which are also the x-intercepts, of our graph are x is equal to, and again switch the sign, negative 1, positive 4, positive 5. Very well. Now go ahead and watch the second part of this tutorial.